programmers. Today I was having a really interesting discussion with some students about error handling in C++. And let's look at this little example where I have a short int and I ask the user to enter in the value and I'm using CN. If not CN, this will occur if there was an error. So let me show you just some of the cases like if the user entered in a letter instead of a number, it'll go into the error because CN will be in an error state. If the user put in a number, then it'll go into the else and there was success. So some students were asking, well, what if the user enters in something that's too large? That's going to put it in an error state. Um, what if it put they put in something with a floating point number that actually isn't going to be an error it's just going to read the integer part the part before the decimal point um, so one question you might wonder is uh, what is the largest value you could put in there if you've got a short int and you can figure that out if you look at this constant it's like an abbreviation for short max and there's also a short min to show you the smallest possible value and you'll find that in the limits header. So we can run this and we can see, well, the largest integer that we're going to have if we've got a short int is going to be 32,000. If I try 32,767, that's going to work. If I try one more than that, it's going to be an error state. So it was trying to read in a short and it read something that doesn't fit in that spot in memory. So pretty good error handling. CN has better error handling than you would see with scanf and C, but it's not perfect. So what could we do to recognize the situation where they've got either a floating point number or they've got a mix of numbers and letters? That really isn't valid input, but it's going to just read the integer part. So let's see what else we can do with this example. Well, first I want to break things down and talk about this header s stream and an i string stream. This is a class that could be used to take something that was originally read in as a string data type and then parse out the individual parts and turn them into a different data type like an int. So I'm going to create a variable of i string stream and call the constructor and pass in something that's just a normal string. So I could have just hard coded this value in here. And from that, I want to be able to pull out an integer. I'll call it num. And you can do that with the extraction operator. So instead of reading in from cn, you could read in from the string, see if you can put it into the integer, and then we'll print it out and see if it works. So the num is equal to and we can see whether or not we were able to convert the first part of the string to a number, and we were. And then we could try, try to keep going, see if we can get the float out. So I added a little bit more code saying, okay, rem you remember where you left off after you read in an int, now let's see if we can read in a float, and there's no problem. So just like with CN, it'll skip any white space you have there. Back to our original example, I'm going to include that new header, and then I'm going to read in the input from the user using CN and a string. Temporarily, we'll put it in a string, and then we're going to try to put it into that I string stream. And we can pass in the string to initialize that. And now we can use the extraction operator and parse whatever we read in from the user, see if we can put it into our short int x. And if that worked, then we'll have it in x, otherwise we've got an error. I have one extra s here I just deleted. Now instead of checking not cn, I'm going to check not iss for my input string stream. So if they put in letters, that that extraction operator will fail. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, but I also want to check to see if we are at the end of the file or not. Because um, if they typed in a mix, some letters and some numbers, then we would not be at the end of the file. So 
if we're not at the end of the file, that would be an error. Let's try that. So some numbers, some letters. We're not at the end of the file, so that's an error. But if you just do numbers and enough to make it um, a short end, you're good. Okay, so this is using this object or this class. We've got a, a superior solution than we had before, but the students also came up with the idea of what if you've got an unsigned short or unsigned of any type, like will it notice that you actually put in something that's negative and it says success, but really that was a negative value, so that isn't success. So let's add one more thing to catch that problem. So here I'm going to take advantage of the fact that we originally read the input in as a string, and I'm going to use a function to find whether or not there's a negative sign in that string. So I could say um, the input in string format and then find and see was there a negative sign anywhere in there. And if this succeeds, we'll figure out what position in the string it was. If it didn't succeed, um, then it would be um, in no position inside the string. And this no position thing is part of the string class. So I'm going to do string scope resolution operator. So that's quite a lot. Let's test it out and see if it does any better. So we've got our negative numbers. That's an error because of this section. We run it again with something that's combining numbers and letters. And that's an error because we're not at the end of the, not really file, but end of the object here. There's still more going on. Let's try a floating point number. That's not going to fly. And we can try just straight letters. So I think we've got a far superior solution here. But it can get quite complicated if you think of all the possible errors that could happen with user input. All right, happy programming.